Hello and welcome to another Science 9 Crash Course. In this episode, we are going to discuss nutrients. The food that we eat contains different substances that are needed for proper health. These are nutrients, water, and fiber. Water is required for our bodies and cells to function properly. Eating foods that are high in fiber have many health benefits, which include maintaining proper bowel health, lowering cholesterol levels, controlling blood sugar levels, and aiding in achieving a healthy weight. All food provides some nutrients for our bodies. We can organize the nutrients that we eat into five main groups. The first three types of nutrients that we will discuss are all sources of energy. The first type of nutrient that we're going to discuss are called carbohydrates. This nutrient's primary responsibility is providing energy to the body. Some examples of carbohydrates would be rice, grains, potatoes, and fruits. The next type of nutrient are called proteins. These can provide energy, but are also the building blocks for all of the proteins within our own bodies. You can get proteins from meats, eggs, dairy products, legumes, or nuts. The last type of nutrient that you can get energy from are called lipids, more commonly known as fats and oils. Lipids not only provide us with energy, but are also used to store energy in your body. Vitamins are a different type of nutrient. They don't provide us with energy, but provide many different functions, like helping enzymes perform chemical reactions. Foods that are high in vitamins are fruits and vegetables. Another type of nutrient that does not provide us with energy, but again helps us with different cellular processes, are called minerals. Minerals are substances that are found in the earth, for example, sodium, calcium, or copper. Nutrients can also be broken down into two different groups, organic and inorganic. The nutrients, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and vitamins are all considered organic because they contain the element carbon and are usually derived from living things. On the other hand, minerals are what we call inorganic because they do not contain carbon and are found in the earth. All of these nutrients, however, are required in different amounts for our bodies to function properly. For a vitamin or mineral to be required in amounts of more than 100 milligrams per day, these are called macro minerals. And if a vitamin or mineral are required in less than 100 milligrams per day, these are called trace minerals or trace elements. If we do not get these proper amounts of these vitamins and minerals, we can develop a deficiency and will eventually lead to some diseases. For example, if you have a lack of vitamin C, you can develop a disease called scurvy. Scurvy is a disease that will cause many problems, but one of the main symptoms are purple and pink-like spots all over your body. If you have a lack of iodine in your body, you can develop a disease called goiter. Goiter is an inflammation of the thyroid gland located in the neck because iodine is a major component of thyroid hormones. In order to get all of these minerals and nutrients, we must eat plants, and we can thank plants for all this hard work they do. Plants are able to absorb and produce mineral concentrations up to 10,000 times greater than in the soil. So without plants, we would not be able to get all the nutrients that we need, no matter how much dirt that you eat. Plants also require nutrients for themselves. The three main nutrients that plants require are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, or NPK. Nitrogen primarily helps with leaf production. Phosphorus primarily helps the root system grow and potassium is mostly responsible for the growth of the flowers. To ensure that plants and crops receive the proper amount of nutrients, we have invented a chemical known as fertilizer. If you look at a fertilizer bag, you will notice that there are three numbers in order that represent the relative amounts of each element. The first one is nitrogen, the second phosphorus, and the third potassium. Fertilizers have completely changed agriculture. Since the 1950s, crop production has more than doubled because of the use of fertilizers. There are, however, of course, some downsides to the use of fertilizers, but we'll get to those in a later crash course. Well, it looks like this crash course has come to an end, so thanks for listening.